So I have a bit of a problem. Even seven years after starting kiteboarding, I think about kiteboarding most days. I think about kiteboarding five or six times a day. I'm the type of person that for my honeymoon, I took my wife to a kite camp in a remote part of Sri Lanka. Most of our family vacations, they revolve around kiteboarding. And so today I just wanna talk about the five reasons I think you should consider kiteboarding. I'm gonna talk a little bit through how I got interested, how I got started, and then at the end I'll talk about some tips for people who are interested in starting out. So let's jump into it. First, let's talk about how I got the idea. I was living in San Francisco. I was in the car riding with my buddy, Pat. He got a notification on his phone that the weather was up and he turned to me and he said, you can either get out and walk home or you can come with me to the beach. I ended up at the beach with him. I watched him set up, get out on the water. I watched people ride for a couple hours. And somewhere in the back of my mind, this stuck as a potentially interesting and good idea. I didn't get to try it out for a couple of years. I moved from San Francisco to France and then back to New York City. Travel was always a problem, but I finally got to a place, I got settled, I found some friends who wanted to learn, and we ended up taking a trip down to the Outer Banks. After a false start with a kite school that wasn't so great and a crazy instructor named Moose, who took us out on a day where the wind was too light and our kites fell out of the sky, we got the number of an instructor in a bar that night. We found a great local instructor named Tony side Tom. He got us out on the water and right then and there from that first ride when I felt the power of the kite, I knew I was hooked. So let's get into those five reasons. The reasons I think you should try kiting and these were the reasons that I got hooked on it. First was the rush or the excitement that I felt when I first felt that power in the kite ripped me up out of the water. It was like having your own personal jet ski. It was like having a water buffalo pull you. That's exciting and that was interesting and I got a rush from doing that. And I think a lot of people will feel that same energy when they get those first water starts. Next, I think that it's easier to access places to go kiteboarding than many other sports. Prior to kiteboarding, I was a skier, I was a rock climber. A lot of my time was spent trying to figure out how do I get to the mountains? How do I get to a place where there's snow? How do I get there in the seasons when there's gonna be snow on the ground? And I just found kiteboarding a lot more accessible. I live in Brooklyn, I can kite 20 minutes away. I have family in Florida, I have family in Texas and I can easily kite in all of those locations. And I think you're gonna be a happier person if you've got a hobby and a sport that's just more accessible for you. Next, I think, is just the calming effects of being able to spend time out on the water. I live in a busy, loud, intense, rushed city. It really helps me get settled. It helps me recover from all of that energy by just being out on the water with the quiet of the kite, no engines running. It helps me escape the rush of city life. And I think this is something that in our modern lives, people need a way to disconnect from their phones, disconnect from their computers, and just get away from it all. Kiteboarding does that for me. Next are the travel opportunities. All of the best kite spots in the world are far away and are in super interesting places. A lot of the travel I do with my wife, we go somewhere interesting, we do a week of cultural things and local visiting, then we'll go do a week of kite surfing. So I think kite gear travels fairly easily. These local kite spots, they're interesting, and it's just an excuse to get out and see many new places in the world. The last thing about kiteboarding is, is really the people you meet on these trips in these places. It's a bit of an intimidating sport. It's a bit of a challenge to get into. It takes a certain level of commitment. And I think that just filters kiters for being, for the most part, a rather interesting bunch. I've ended up in random places in South Carolina, and random places in Florida that I'd never been before. And when I got to the beach, a couple of local kite surfers would just walk up, introduce themselves to me, help me understand the local conditions, help me understand local safety. And I found I made friends rather quickly. And so I think that last reason for why you should try kite surfing is really the people that are drawn to the sport as well. So those are my five reasons why you should try kite surfing. Let's get into some of my tips for those of you who are, who are kind of at that point and they wanna try it. Here are my tips to help you get up and going. So first is just get started. A lot of people think that it requires great physical strength. A lot of people think that it requires kind of no fear of heights or, or an intense appreciation for extreme sports. And the reality couldn't be further from the truth. It really just requires a little bit of coordination and a little bit of patience to learn. You can get up and riding after two or three lessons, so it's relatively quick to get into if you find the right instructor and you get good lessons. And so I think you should just jump into it and I think you'll know right away after those first couple lessons whether this is something you wanna keep doing. My next tip is if you are gonna take lessons, group them together. Don't take one lesson one month, the next lesson six months later and spread it all out. 
you're never gonna learn, the muscle memory isn't gonna stick, you're not gonna get the feel for the kite, and you're not gonna learn as fast. Pick a time where you can go for four or five days to a place with good wind, get it all out of the way at one time. You'll be up, you'll be riding, you'll be comfortable, and you'll be confident enough to go ride on your own. And it's not something that will just drag out forever. Next tip is talk to local kiters on your beach. Don't be intimidated to talk to those people. They're gonna be the ones that know the most about the conditions. They're gonna know what type of kite gear you need. They're gonna know the safety of local spots. All of those things are gonna help get you more comfortable and help make you more confident to get out there and get riding. Next tip I have is talk to your instructor, talk to the locals and find a safe local spot for you to go kiting in after your lessons. And so when I mean safe, I mean something that doesn't have offshore winds, something that has a big open beach that's easy to launch on, preferably placed with shallow water and big open spaces that isn't crowded. If you can find that spot, you're gonna get that much more confident and you're gonna get to the point where you're riding up wind independently and consistently on your own and you're doing it safely. So the last and final tip I have is around gear. I think a lot of people think that the gear is super intimidating, it can be really expensive. So the lesson I wish I'd learned earlier on was you can buy used gear. So yet again, speak to your instructor, speak to your local kite shop. There's a couple of big national kite shops in the US that sell used gear and they put ratings on each of the pieces of equipment. I've purchased from a bunch of them. I've gotten really high quality, great condition, new gear for, for much cheaper than going out and buying new gear. Obviously, if you have the budget and you only trust new stuff, you know, go ahead and do that. So for those of us that are a bit more budget conscious, don't hesitate to buy used gear. I'll follow this video up with tips on what kind of gear beginners should buy. I'll follow it up with some tips on how to get the most on lessons. Here, I just wanted to get out there. I think more people should try kiting. I think it's a really exciting sport. And if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, throw them in the comments. And thanks for watching.